Welcome to St. Paul's Luther Church, the seventh Sunday of Easter, May the 24th, 2020. In these days, between Ascension and Pentecost, we gather with the disciples in the upper room, waiting for the Spirit to transform the church around the world. In today's Gospel, Jesus prays for His followers and their mission in His name. Amid religious, social, and economic divisions, we seek the unity that Jesus had with His Father. Made one in baptism, we go forth to live our faith in the world, eager for the unity that God intends for the whole human family. Thank you for joining us today in this online worship, St. Paul's Lutheran Church, the corner of Bull and Blanding, 1715 Bull Street, Columbia, South Carolina, 29201. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for His sake, God forgives us of all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hello, St. Paul's. This is the Richardson here. And today we're here to talk about John 17. Jesus prays for us. Yes. So, so in the Gospel of John, chapter 17... It says that Jesus looked up to the heaven and said, Father, the time is here. Give your son glory so that your son can give you glory. And then when you move down towards chapter 9, uh, or, verse, or verse 9, sorry, um, Jesus said, I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you gave me because they are yours. Everything I have is yours and everything you have is mine. I think that speaks volumes when you talk about how Jesus prayed for us, um, even though we lived in sin, um, he died for us to save us from sin. 
and he prayed for us to, you know, to live amongst one another. And have a nice family and live together and have a nice day. That's right. And to live amongst our neighbors who might not always be Christians. Yep. But to and understand our parents. That's right. And to obey our parents. Yep. And today we appreciate because we created these little things for everybody in our family. Mm. But we only made some for us. And what are those called? We thought that we would suggest that everybody make a prayer jar just like Jesus prayed for us. You can make your own prayer jar and pray for your neighbors. Yep, pray you can for... put stickers on them. Yes, you can decorate them to make them You can write them. To make you them can special. You can put whatever sticker on you want. Yes. And you can put whatever sticker you want. That's, That's right. Prayer. So, Lola, what is something that you would pray for to put in your prayer jar? Um, I love it. It's so beautiful, and I love Mulan. You love Mulan? Mm -hmm. The Disney character? Yep. What about you love your friends? I and love you... my garden. I give it kisses every day. And I love my family. And you're very thankful that... And I love the trees. And I love the fruit. I love cantaloupe. I love zucchini. I love watermelon. We have a lot of love here. But so as you see, you can make little pieces of paper. And then you fold them up. And then you open one lid up. And then you put it in the jar. And then you can open up your jar and put your prayers in them. And for the boys and girls. And this is how you put them in. Just fold it and then mm -hmm. drop it in. And then take the lid and then just put it back on. That's right. You can do whatever you want to. You can use whatever sticky you want to. Or you anything can use you have to. your dad's favorite colors. To but decorate. But this is sort of like some adults like to have a prayer journal. So this is another way to keep up with your prayers is to create a little prayer jar. We use crystal light little containers, but you can use a can and decorate it, or you can use a peanut butter jar. Or mason any, jars. A mason well, you, jar. Well, you can use whatever jar you want to use, but you have to use small papers if you want to use big cans and little cans. That's right. And I have some that I'm not done with because I'm using it for my bathroom. And I even have my own untangle brush. That's right. And we are thankful for that as well. Absolutely. But so just like Jesus prayed for us, we hope that you will pray for others that are around you, your friends and your family, especially during this time. Absolutely. So let's end with prayer. Make pretty hands. Can I say a blessing? Say, Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day, and we ask that you help us to, to remember to pray for those around us, both near and far. Help us to pray for those who may be sick, they may be hurting, they may be homeless, or they just may need somebody to, to think about them each and every day. We ask this in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Was that a better one? We miss you, St. Paul. Absolutely. Bye. Well, the first reading is Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. Today's reading is part of the introduction to the narrative of the outpouring of the Spirit on Pentecost. These verses tell of the risen Lord's conversation with his disciples on the eve of his ascension in which he promises that they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. The reading from Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, 
but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were set, staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord.
reading is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14. Our faith in Christ does not make us immune from the scorn of others. Nevertheless, we are to resist the designs of evil when we experience disparagement from others because we trust God's grace will strengthen and guide us. The reading from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among, us, among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, with, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. On the night before his crucifixion, Jesus prays to his heavenly Father, asking that those who continue his work in this world will live in unity. The reading from the Gospel of John. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for me. He ever turned someone down, said something like, No, please do not pray for me. I suppose there could be the snarky response of someone who thinks you are 
ill-informed and then says with sarcasm, I will pray for you. But I suspect that is a rarity. If you offer to pray for someone, be sure and fulfill your obligation. Whether you write it down on a notepad, make a mental note, use some digital means to remember, do offer a prayer for the one to whom the promise was made. What if Jesus met you and offered to pray for you? Which, of course, is a major theme of these 11 verses in John chapter 17. Jesus says in verse 9, I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. This is a specific prayer for believers, for those who align their lives with the way of Jesus. You, follower of Jesus, can rest in the promise of Jesus' prayers. Maybe it seems a bit odd to you that Jesus prays, because prayer is nothing more than asking or seeking God. We may ask for things, ask for virtues, ask for faith, ask for, well, just about anything. Well, not just anything. But we can go to God and ask. So here, Jesus asked God, His Father, for you. And what exactly is this text illuminating? Jesus gave His followers eternal life and the ability to know God, the only true God. So Jesus prays for you and me to know God as the only true God. Now do not think for a minute this is an exclusive claim but a clear pronouncement that there is only one true God. And that true God is seen clearly and without any reservation in Jesus our Lord, the Christ, the Messiah. It is not as if there are a pantheon of gods anyway. Monotheism demands there is only one God. Many gods cannot be all-powerful or all-knowing or all-present. Only one true God can be the Creator. Jesus prays for us to know God and to see His truth. Jesus asserts that the believers knew with certainty that Jesus came from God. They knew it because they witnessed the deeds of power from the hands of Jesus. And they believed. Verse 8, They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. This certainty pushed them to proclaim boldly the resurrection of Jesus and Jesus as the Son of the only true God. That message got them in trouble. And it can do the same today. Practically any response to this message is going to be a retort such as, what about other faiths? What about fill in the blank? with another religion. When I was in high school, I gave my pastor a pretty hard time. I remember listening to a particular song that inspired me so much, a secular song on the radio, uh, that I sought to know more about the authors of the song. That directed me to a particular religion that attempted to blend Christianity with Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, as well as a few others. So I posed the question to my pastor, why can't all of these be on the path, correct, 
and striving for God. <laughs> I recall more his shock than his answer. Jesus is the Son of the only true God. If this sounds harsh and hard to you, then read the script. Take it up with Jesus in these words in John, because if you dilute something enough, pretty soon what you have left has no real meaning. One of my favorite books is Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. Here are some of his more powerful words. Quote, I am trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about Him, that is Christ. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept His claim to be God, what someone would say. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who is merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on a level with the man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a few fool. You can spit at him and kill him as a demon. Or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come up with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that option open to us. He did not intend to. Close quote. Jesus, the Son of the only true God, prays for us. I am resting in that promise today, and I hope you will too. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and holy God, we lift our hands and our hearts before you as the only true God, that you would hear us, give us the certainty of belief, and help us to know you, O Lord, as the only true God, and to see you clearly in Jesus Christ our Lord. In his holy name we pray. Amen. God be with you and bless you.
let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With joyful confidence, let us approach our Lord's throne of grace, there to pray on behalf of the world, the church, and all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we worship you and adore you. You revealed your glory through your Son, Jesus our Lord, who has risen and ascended and who reigns at your right hand forever. Lord, in your mercy. Empower your church to abide in Jesus. Enable it to preach the gospel of salvation and celebrate the sacraments in accordance with your living word. Help us to proclaim to the whole world your blessings. Lord, in your mercy. Give strength to your persecuted people and bless them with the grace to triumph through their sufferings and rise to serve you even in the presence of those who persecute them. Lord, in your mercy. Let us all be so united to your beloved Son and with one another that in everything we glorify your name and spread the bounties of your mercy throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. On this Memorial Day weekend, we lovingly commend into your care all our beloved dead, especially those who gave their life in service of their country. Keep their memories fresh and bright. Spur us to deeds of faithfulness, generosity, and self-sacrifice. And hasten the day when wars shall cease. Evil is vanquished. Every tear is wiped away. And you are truly all in all. Lord, in your mercy. You have appointed your Son as King of creation and Lord of the nations. Teach our leaders to praise your name to love justice and righteousness, and to seek those things that make for peace. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our hearts to you on behalf of all whose lives are clouded by any sort of affliction or sorrow. Let the light of Jesus' countenance heal and cheer them. Lord, in your mercy. We praise and magnify you, Most Holy Father. We entrust our prayers and petitions to you in the strong name and for the dear sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. mighty and merciful Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await His coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of Your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with You and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in Your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you to eternal life. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now, send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace, share the good news.